So uh, Frankie here was asking me about what to do because when he was playing with his dog and he was playing fetch with his dog, he accidentally threw the ball and it, um, it hit her in the face. Now that has happened to me before. I have a trick where I work with Itty Bit. Um, I'm gonna ask Frank to put a clip of that trick in this video. Um, but where I work with Itty Bit and I'm throwing the card and she's jumping on a box and then um, she knocks over the box and she falls off the, um, the box that she's jumping on and then she gets nervous about the card as well um, and, and picking it up. What you gotta do is you gotta go back to the corner. You go back to stage one. That's what you always have to do is you go back to stage one and you rebuild the game without the error in it. Um, it might take you a little while, but um, it is doable. Um, so right now, Itty Bit is at the point with the card game where she will pick it up. She won't put it in the box yet on top of the platform, but she will pick it up and she will um, put it on the platform and we're re rebuilding basically. Hey guys, it's Mark Wright from Argos Dog Training, and today we are going to be doing episode two of Fetch. This episode will be about troubleshooting. So basically, um, as you guys practice the first episode where we're introducing the game of Fetch, things come up and there are questions, and then we're going to answer those questions for you today. Okay, so our first question is from uh, Yay Dog Guy, I think it is, Yay Dog Guy. And his question was, what if the dog is not interested in the ball when, um, when we're playing fetch? What do we do then? Well, a lot of that is engagement. Um, you might want to pick a different time to practice. You want to look for when your dog is excited. If the dog is tired, then it's not, gonna, it's not really going to be fun time to practice for you. Um, but... Picking a time when the dog is tired, that's gonna be one thing. Another thing is, is hanging around the house with the ball as well and using it to tease the dog. Maybe also I would shrink the corner. I would use less space and have the dog, really all I wanna see is the dog get a little interested, mark with a good, yeah, that's it, and give him good food. You know, every time they show a little bit of interest. Sandy, and I don't know if you can see Sandy here, um, so I'm gonna give Frank a second. So what you're gonna do in this situation is you take your ball out and you have food, right? And you put the ball, yes, and then she gets food there, right? Here's the ball, yes. Just for just touching the ball, yes. You know, that's how you get into like really, yes. So to going back to that question, um, that yay dog guy um, asked, what if the dog's not interested in the ball at all? Yes. This is how you start to build interest. And what can happen in time is you can use the natural state of the dog's frustration to even get her to open her mouth. So I go here and I just hold. You see that licking? Yes, I mark that and I yes that. And I could continue to do that until she starts to jaw at the ball or bite at it. That's a different treat. She's like, Martin, you're giving me something different. Don't worry, she'll eat it. Dogs always eat all of my treats because I have good treats. What you gonna do, Sandy? Yes. And that's how that works. Good job, sweetie. Another thing you can do is anytime the dog wants to engage with you, out comes the ball. You know, that will help too. You know, um, so make it always about the ball. If that's your focus, if that's what you wanna get done, then just stick with it. Yes, good girl, sweetie. Very good, here. Here. Good. Good job, hey, hey, here. Good girl, there you go. That's mine. It's not time for fetch yet. It's not time for fetch yet, yeah, bye. Excellent, all right. All right, Sandy, you ready? So just hiding the ball is building up, you know, drive or engagement. Just little things like this. <laughs> That's how you make a dog want a ball. Another thing that you could possibly try, like if you look at this ball, there's some holes in it. There's opportunity there where if there's a really food motivated dog, where you could get some food in there and the dog might chase after the food. But most of the time I don't do that. 
Most of the time what I do is I just continue to play, continue to try, and then sooner or later the dog tries, it has a little bit of fun, and then you're on your way. So another thing that I would like to say about that, not wanting to chase the ball, is our energy matters a lot. The energy that we bring to the game, you know, our enthusiasm level, that matters a lot as well. Um, sometimes you could get the dog, if the dog is not chasing the ball, Sometimes they will chase some other object, like if you have a fetched or tug toy that you like to play tug with, um, the dog might chase that. So you could start the game there where you toss the tug toy and then you come back with the food in the same body position and then graduate eventually to using a ball instead of using um, the tug toy. So our next question is, what happens when the dog starts chewing on the ball or thinking about the ball as a chew toy rather than um, something to go chase and fetch? Um, so a couple of things. The first thing is that um, the amount of time that we play might be a little bit long, you know? Um, so if the dog was chasing the ball and they stopped chasing it and started chewing, um, that means I probably threw it a little too much for the, where the dog is in, this, in its game of fetch. Um, so that's one thing. Another thing is if the dog starts chewing on the ball, um, a lot of times if I have good high value treats, the dog is gonna come and get the treat anyway. As we're teaching, they should come and bring the ball with them to get the treat, because um, that's what dogs commonly do. If I reward here when you have the ball, they're gonna keep coming closer. Um, so that's one thing. The other thing is having two balls, right? So I toss one ball, and if I see that the dog gets into a pattern where they're always chewing, I make sure I'm within five feet of the dog. So I make the corner smaller, I toss the ball, and then I really tease with the other ball as much as possible. Um, sometimes it feels like it's going slow and you're not really quite getting there, but it's through the practice of every day. You know, that's what makes the improvement. So you just keep staying, staying focused, keeping a good mood, and then um, in time your dog is gonna be bringing it back and dropping it for you instead of chewing it. One of the big troubleshooting things is um, always going back a step um, to where we started, you know? Um, so if I'm having difficulty with my dog at any point in the process, then I'm gonna go back basically to the corner. The corner is, um, once you get into that corner, it opens up all the associations. You know, um, if you work through troubles or problems in the corner, then it makes it a lot easier for you um, later on, you know, to work through problems again in that corner. So always go back to the easier step. Whenever things get difficult, just take a step back. Um, and that's true for any kind of training. As the, as the training gets more difficult, whenever you run into a problem, you go back to, to the easy, get success, and then slowly build out again. Okay, so another common question that we get, and maybe I went over this a little bit in the first video, is what happens if I, if I toss the ball and the dog just runs by me with the ball? Once again, I go back to the corner here. Um, I toss the ball in the corner so they have to run right past me and I show them that body language. I also will tease more with the other ball. That's what I would do if the dog is running by me and not stopping. You wanna kinda know your dog's patterns. How does she get into the chewing? All that kind of thing. And then you wanna disrupt one of, the, one of the things that would happen before she starts to chew. For example, I throw the ball, the dog goes and gets the ball, comes back towards me, runs around me in the half circle, and then lays down a few feet away and chews, right? What I'm gonna do is when the dog comes towards me, I'm gonna make sure I catch her somehow. I'm gonna get her with the treats. I'm gonna get her to not go around me and circle around. If she does circle around, then I'm gonna make sure I'm gonna get her to turn around back to me. You know, if she does circle around and she gets away from me and she starts to lay down, then I'm gonna try to get her up. You know, whatever I can do to disrupt the pattern of behavior that she does um, is what I'm gonna be working on. Another thing that might happen is you throw the ball, but the dog, you throw it far, but the dog doesn't run all the way to the ball. They start running first and then they get distracted and they come off of it. Once again, shrink. Everything gets smaller. I might go back to the corner, but a lot of times I don't have to. I would end the training session there. If I throw the ball and the dog doesn't run all the way to it, I end that session there. The next time I come out, I remember that, and I throw the ball a lot shorter, hoping that they get to the ball quickly and they get back to me quickly. I want that to the ball and back to happen faster, 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 and then I extend the range that the ball will go. So here we go, um, troubleshooting video. We're going to be using the corner again, going back. Um, I haven't worked with Sandy in a little while here. I left that to Frank um, to do, so we'll see how she does. 
All right, so here's my, my ball and... Yes, good girl, very good, excellent. Very good, of course I let that ball roll. Here it comes, good, you ready? Yes, good girl, very good, excellent, ready? Yes, good job, very good girl. So you can see she doesn't want to drop the ball until I put my hand with the treat down for her. Good job, excellent, very good, good girl. Let's see what happens now. Yes. Ooh. Ooh. So you see she wants to play. So right now, she does not want to trade for the ball, but she will easily trade for food, right? So that is something you keep in mind. You watch what your dog, yes, good girl. What she wants to do. Yes, good job. Excellent. <laughs> yes, good girl. Very good. Very good. So that's how that game is played. So she's doing she's doing pretty much what I expect from her to be doing at this point. Where'd they go? Where'd they go? Excellent. Now, a lot of times we think that we have to do a long session, but to tell you the honest truth, for those of you starting off, that is a session because she still wants to play. So we could just stop here and then next time we could build on it a little bit more. Excellent. All right, we're going to take her outside. Sandy. So we're outside. Um, now, there's no corner out here. Well, there are corners, but you know how it is. I'm going to use the wall here as my corner to start with. Sandy, you ready? You ready? Uh, first I have to take a pee-bake. You ready? Here we go. Oh, I just went, clipped her with the ball a little bit there. Yes, good girl. Very good. Now you see she's moving away. I'm not concerned about that because eventually that will happen. You got to have a little patience. Good girl. Very good. Excellent. Excellent dog. Good girl. Very good, Sandy. I don't even mind that she put it up there for now. I don't care about that. Because when she's running to get it, I could always go get the other. Ah, good girl. Very good. Good job. And then we're going to take a break. So why do I take a break? To build up. To build a game. Ready? 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 Good girl. Very good. Very good. Here. Ah, go get the ball. Let's go. Let's go get the ball. Get it. There it is. There it is. Ball goes away. There it is. There it is. Excellent. There you go. Ready? Here we go. Here we go again. Here we go again. Good girl. Very good. Yes. Good job. That's what I'm looking. So that last rep before the last time, Second to last rep, right? She didn't really get the ball and bring it over to me. Good girl. I'll give her that one too. Good, good job, sweetheart. You ready? Because I'm still building a game with her. Excellent. Ready? Ready? Yes, good girl, very good, excellent. All right, I think I'm gonna turn and throw that way now. Sandy, here, hey, you ready? You ready, you ready, you ready, you ready, you ready? 
Yes, good girl. Very good, Sandy. Excellent. Here, hey, where are you going? So this is normal, this happens with dogs too. Sandy, look what I got, look what I got. Yes, I'll take that. Good, you ready, you ready? Excellent. Good girl, Sandy. Very good. Oh, you ready? You ready? You ready? It's always good to change up the toys every once in a while because new things get new attitude. Oh, here you go. Hey. She leaves it there. I'm okay with that because we're building the game. Excellent. You ready? Here, Sandy. Oh. Oh. You ready? You ready? And she's getting tired. So that throw is probably her last throw for now. Good girl. Very good. Good job. Because you can see she's always going a little further and further away. So for here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold my treat. She's going to come over and get it from me eventually. Hey, Sandy, here. And as long as she's being rewarded near me, then, um, then in time that ball gets closer and closer. Here. Good job. Excellent, good girl. All right, so in this video, what we did, we did a little bit of troubleshooting. We answered some common questions that people will have. The biggest takeaway, the biggest tip from this whole video is to remember that as things get more difficult, if you run into any stumbling blocks, if your dog regresses in any way, go back to an earlier stage, an earlier step, in order to be able to help your dog out. In the third video, we're going to be talking about how to use these games as training games. Um, so make sure you're practicing. We got to build this game. Like Sandy here, she needs to be a lot stronger in her fetch game before we can use it for reward as we're teaching her to do other things. So that's the plan is to make the fetch, the running, the chasing, and the coming back and bringing the ball as a big reward for her so that way we could teach her to sit and then she could go get the ball and come and she could go get the ball those kind of things. So until the next time, definitely continue practicing with your dog and play and fetch. If you like what you see here today, then definitely subscribe to our channel and give us a thumbs up. If you check our description, you will see links to our other social media outlets and to my website, argostraining.com. Definitely drop us a question to ask, hashtag askargos on Twitter. And until the next time, enjoy your day and enjoy your dog. That leads me to another question. Are you recording this? The question was, and this is for my trainer friends, what do you do when your client doesn't practice? <laughs> that, is, that is a very big question. What do you do when your client doesn't practice? Well, you can't feel bad for yourself. You can't feel bad for the dog either or for your training because they're just not doing it. Um, what you have to do is you have to try to motivate the client as much as possible, break it down and make it as small all the exercises as small and as clear as possible so that way they know what to practice. But you really can't make them practice. Um, you could encourage them, you could cajole them, you could uh, threaten them, <laughs> you could do whatever the necessary that you can do, but you can't make them do it. If they don't practice, if, they, if you care about it more than they care about it, you know, it's not really gonna be that successful. So that's that story. <laughs>